Greetings, it is Max so Diddly here, and today I'm here with another Java tutorial to be you get an A in your coursework or exam. And today we're here with a simple enhanced verify user login system. So this is a follow-up to a tutorial I made a few years ago. There's an eye up in the corner if you're curious on how we implemented this system back then. So quickly to describe this system. We're going to let a user input a username and a password, and we're going to match it with a text file to see if the username and password combination is correct and a valid login. If it's a valid login, we're going to return true. If it's invalid, meaning there's no match, we're going to return a false. Before we begin, make sure you input java.io.bufferedreader and java.io.fileReader. And if you're in the NetBeans IDE, right click on your project and go to properties and you'll see the project folder. In your project folder or wherever you want to have your text file, uh, name it whatever you want and inside have some login details. So what we've got is a username, comma and then a password. This is the data we're going to be working with in this tutorial. If you're on another IDE, you may have to do something slightly different to find where your project folder is located. Inside our main method, we have string username equals dogecoin, string password equals moon, string file path equals data.txt. These are just going to be variables for the user input for the password and username. Obviously, in your program, you would have some way to get the user input. Then we're going to have a boolean called login success. And it's going to equal verify user login, username input, password input, file path, and a comma. We'll go back to this line when we actually implement the verify user login method. So let's do that right now. Create a public static boolean. Call it verify user login. And we're going to take in a string and we're going to call it username, another string and we're going to call it password a string called file path and a string called delimiter. So what's going on? Well, this is going to be the username input, the password input, the file path, and what we're going to use to separate each field of records or lines in our file. In this case, it's going to be a comma. Firstly, create a string called current line and a string array called data. We're going to use current line to read a line and store it. And then we're going to use data to essentially store that line where each field is separated into its own index and therefore is easier to manipulate. Next, since we're doing file handling, uh, do a try and catch statement, which is simply execute some code in the try statement. If something goes wrong, execute what's in the catch statement and don't crash. If nothing goes wrong, just continue on with the code after the try catch statement. Firstly, inside the try statement, we want to do file reader, fr, which is just going to be what we're calling our file reader because we're lazy. I advise you use a better name in your actual code. We're going to do equals new file reader, then we're going to pass in the file path. We're creating an object which is going to essentially handle reading the file. Then we're going to create a buffered reader because this is good practice. And we're going to call it BR because we're really original with our lazy variable names. And then we're going to do equals new buffered reader and we're going to pass in the reference to our file reader object. So in this case it's going to be FR. Underneath creating our buffered reader we're going to make a while loop. So it's going to be while do two brackets current line, which is referencing our string that we created before, equals buffered reader, or in this case br, dot read line, and then we need to do another bracket, not equals null. So what's going on here? Essentially, we're going to, at the start of each iteration of this while loop, we're going to store whatever the next line in our text file is, to current line, which is our string variable. And after that, we're going to check if it's not equal to null. If it's not equal to null, that means there's more data in the file we want to read to validate the user input against. 
If it's equal to null, that means there's no lines left in the file that we need to read, and therefore we can carry on with our program because there's no more data to read. In our while loop, we need to firstly do data, which is referencing our string array up here, equals current line dot split delimiter. So what's going on here? Essentially, we're going to get our current line string, which is essentially the line we've just read, and we're going to put and we're going to convert it to a string array, and each element of this array is going to be determined by where a comma is. In the context of this program, what's going to happen here is it's going to be Leroy Jenkins will be assigned its own element of the data array, and all right chums, let's do this, will also get its own element in the array, as that's where the comma is, and it's going to separate them. After that, we need to do an if statement. So we're going to do if data0 dot equals username and data1 dot equals password return true. So what's going on here? We're checking if the username and the password match. And for them to match, they need to, the username and the password need to be found on the same line in this text file. Because let's say Dogecoin is the username inputted but password123 is the password inputted, you're given the username of a user and the password of another user. That's meant to return a false because they need to be on the same line. When you're trying to log in, you have to give a username and a password. You can't just give one or the other. So that's why we're going to be doing, we need to check that both inputs are equal on the same line, which is exactly what this if statement does. We need to check both elements of this data array match the user input, which is our string username and our string password. And we're using the AND operator because both need to be true. And since both are true, this return true statement is called. And then we can exit the loop as well, so we don't have to read the whole file if we find the match early on. After the try catch statement, just do return false. Because if an error has occurred, then we can't find a match. So we want to go to this return, return false statement. Let's say if we loop through the whole file and can't find a match, we also want to return false. And that's it for the function. So going back to this boolean login success, we're going to call our verify user login function. We're going to pass in user in name input, which is here. Password input, which is here. A file path, which is data.txt, which is here. And we're going to pass in a comma for our delimiter. And then we're going to print out if it's true or false. So using the Dogecoin and Moon input, let's hit Control S to save our code and then hit play. As you can see, true has been printed because Dogecoin and Moon both match in our data.txt file. So let's say hypothetically, we swap Dogecoin and Moon around. So Dogecoin is the password input and Moon is the username input. Let's see what happens. It returns a false. And the reason is, the person has to enter the username in the username field and the password in the password field. You can't do it the other way around and this code reflects that. Let's try entering something that isn't in the file. Let's do mon monkey. Let's see what happens. It's still a false. Why? Well, there's no user called monkey in this file. There's also no password for called Dogecoin. Let's try something else. Let's try. Let's try Jordan Gamer one two three, and let's put in a password that isn't theirs. Let's do destiny. And now let's go back to our data. As you can see, their password is blah blah blah. So you expect this to return false. And it returned false. So that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. We will be covering more advanced ways to go about doing this. And other useful Java, C Sharp and Visual Basic tutorials. Thanks for being a great audience and I'll see you next time.